digital twins of the office environment. And, of course, other elephants in the room. Almost without exception, we treat office equipment and buildings abstractly, without form, mass, or position, and mostly with static assumptions about their electrical demands and interactions with the rooms in which they are placed. It allows us to tick some reporting boxes, and it's mostly oblivious to the rapidly changing states and impacts on occupant comfort and electrical power distribution. Reality check. A mid-size photocopy machine is no less complex than an office building in terms of thermophysical and electrical power interactions. If we open it up, we find a mix of constructions and distributed mass. There are multiple points of heat generation, multiple paths for air movement, internal spaces which are more or less likely to be subjected to temperature extremes, if we open up other domestic appliances, similar complexities will probably emerge. Ah, but we know, on average, what these machines demand. Oh, really? Have a look at this brief log of electrical demands over a couple of days. What, what average might we pick amongst all of that noise? And have a look at this thermographic image at the end of a print run. Who wants to be in a desk near this? And if a facilities manager asks us what a comfortable distance our usual tools might tell us about, no, they're not going to have much at all to say about it. What would happen if we treated office equipment with the same care and attention as the building itself. Rather than our usual lookup tables and polynomials, why not treat them as dynamic entities fully coupled to the other entities in the building? Let's begin by suspending our usual belief that we know how stuff works and seriously start from scratch. Let's get out the calipers, our scales, our thermal camera, temperature probes, clamp meters. Figure out how to use that old l -Tech kit to measure what's actually going on there. We want to capture the state of the device as it carries out lots of different kinds of tasks. Light loads, heavy loads, different scenarios. What happens during the standby periods? Is this thing ever actually off? What goes on at startup and the shutdown cycles? The usual frustrations with measuring processes will apply, of course. But if we actually begin to look at the data and attempt to understand it, we see that there's a lot of fluctuation in the amps being drawn at 30 second intervals for this machine. After some amount of time, we figure out the story. So what do the measurements reveal? Well, electrical demands change rapidly, and the pattern depends on the task. What we notice is that the machine rarely goes into a deep standby. It keeps in a ready state. And there are actually not that many print jobs during the day. Of course, your mileage might vary from this, but how does reality match our usual assumptions? At any moment in time, there are several different case temperatures. Some are near room ambient, others are quite warm, and there are some places that rarely cool to ambient temperature. There are hot air streams emerging from the machine on several sides. Some would be rather uncomfortable to spend time near. And because the machines never fully on standby, there's always a bit of warm air being emitted. Ideally, enough of a story emerges from the observations to guide the creation of an initial digital twin. First task really is to define what constitutes a digital twin which is fit for purpose. Our goal really is to improve the simulation deliverables in comparison to the usual suspects. 
One of our questions would be, what physical and operational attributes should be included or ignored in our model? Let's keep our focus on the interactions between the device, the room, the occupants, and its electrical demands. Remember our initial complaint that traditional approaches had neither form, nor mass, nor placement? Proper digital twin is going to have form. It will have mass. It will be placeable within the model. In terms of geometric resolution, we might begin with a rough approximation of the machine case, its facade, its internal mass, and the air volumes within that. We are going to be introducing this digital twin into an existing simulation suite. For convenience, I'll use the SPR. You might find that the approach used can be replicated in other tools. In the SPR, the building data model is dominated by zones and surfaces. The interactions between the surfaces and within surfaces are all dynamic. We expect an energy balance within the zones and within each surface. We expect the evolving state of each entity to impact its neighbors. Yes, the geometric and temporal scale is somewhat different. As long as we do not exceed the overall complexity limits of the tool, we have considerable flexibility to explore alternative representations of these ubiquitous devices. Airstreams might represent a challenge. Other than heat loss through the case of the device, the primary heat loss path in these are the warm air exhausts. We could create an airflow network and leverage the existing mass flow solver. Logic for controlling flow exists. However, measuring actual flow rates is not for the faint-hearted. Some parametric excursions might be necessary to thoroughly match observations. Again, we are going to have to calibrate whatever we come up with against what we measured. In the next video, we will see what it takes to implement it.